Hello everyone, my name is Isaiah and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about something that's less in the moment because in the moment my depression is high, I messed up on a lino cut, and our toilet's still broken. So, and it's all very fun stuff. Nettle is being a baby and right on top of me. So if you hear her, I apologize. But I am... Uh, even though I'm not wanting to talk about something that's in the moment, it's still a little bit hard to talk about. So she's being extra snuggly because this is the third time I'm trying to record this. Um, no, I wanted to talk about some of the worst mistakes that I did because I leaned into my Christianity and how it still affects me to this day. So to begin with, we kind of got to start at the very beginning with when I moved to the the small town of Lake Town not its real name um, and to preface this I was a military brat so for the first several years of my life we ended up moving all over the place until about fifth grade when we moved to Lake Town and I stayed there until 12th grade so until I graduated I was a very quiet sort of student I read a lot of books. In fact, in fifth grade, uh, if you aren't familiar with the accelerated reading program, you essentially read books, take a test, and each book is worth a different amount of points. And that year, I set the record for the school's point, how many points someone could get in a year. Um, I think it may have been broken by the time I graduated, but you know, it doesn't matter after a certain amount of time. But when I was in fifth grade, that was a point of pride for me. Um, so it was hard for me to make friends because I was used to moving around. And at the time, I had had my first suicide attempt at age eight because I had thought I'd made some female friends for the first time in my life only for them to be talking really badly about me behind my back. And then I met Tara. She was very much the opposite of me in most ways. Where I was quiet, she was outgoing. Where I was anxious about everything, even as a fifth grader, she seemed so confident. She could ride horses. She was smart. Her, she had a really good relationship with her parents. She was an only child. They had money, um, and Tara quickly became my best friend. It, and Tara stuck with me through some really hard times. Like, fifth grade was terrifying for me. I was in a new school. It was like the last year that I would be there before middle school started with the new school system I was in. And we were moving classes around and that was scary. And I, I, like I said, I was coming from some really traumatizing shit the year before, so I wasn't even sure how I could be friends with the girl, and Tara made it easy. And she was my friend through middle and high school. I had a crush on her at some point, but it didn't last very long, not like with some of my other crushes. And... I don't know how to explain it, but she was my best friend for so long. But then in like 11th grade, my junior year, things started to shift. Um, I was in art class with some of our mutual friends and I had my headphones on, but I wasn't playing any music. And this guy and a younger girl were talking about me saying bad things about me and I got to hear it and I was already struggling I mean I started puberty in sixth grade and I re honestly because I didn't know anything about the LGBT community I didn't understand why it was so hard for me to be going through that and 10th and 11th grade are especially hard because then you had dances and boys and I had crushes on girls I didn't want to acknowledge because I knew 
even if my church didn't really talk about it, it wasn't right, new, quote unquote. And I had experienced a strange for- sort of euphoria where this one guy who kind of stalked several of the girls in my friend group was currently targeting me and I managed to trick him into thinking I was a boy because I had worn one of my dad's shirts and he thought I was a dude and that made me feel so happy and I loved art class and hearing these two talk about me in art class hurt because I mean I wasn't the art teacher's favorite or anything I was just one of the average students I think in her eyes but I really loved that class and it felt like a safe space for me because I wasn't in chemistry, I wasn't in math, it didn't feel so hard, I didn't feel like a failure like I did in band and I thought these people liked me. I had trusted them and they were talking shit about me in front of my own face. But it wasn't Tara. Tara always stood by me. But everything changed my senior year. That's when I got into the inner circle of my youth group. And I remember this vividly because we were at a weekend retreat, just one of those things that you do as a youth group, you know. If you don't, be blessed. Um, And we were watching a movie. I don't remember what it was about. I just remember there was a party and they had invited one of the nerds and the nerd had dressed up and he was prepared to play some off-brand version of Magic the Gathering. And the people in my youth group laughed and that ticked me off. I had a friend in youth group who was very similar to me but she was a lot quieter. And I think I just steamed the way that I still do to these this day, unfortunately, about what was happening. And at the end of the movie, I got up and I told off everybody in that group. I cut into them the best way that I could as a fucking 17 year old about how they were not being Christian for laughing at this guy that I had friends like that who need to know the love of Christ. And I don't remember everything. I think I went into a sort of fugue state because I was just angry. I was so angry at not being accepted at any turn because I was one of those people. I literally learned how to play Magic the Gathering to impress a dude. Now I still have my um, vampire black and white deck, but I don't play anymore. But uh, it's still fun. I like it. And I collected Yu-Gi-Oh cards in sixth grade. So I was definitely one of those people that they were laughing at. And I remember this one kid who was kind of sort of, I considered him a bully to me specifically, stepped up and he apologized to me. And our youth pastor just enveloped me into the youth group. And I became one of the inner circle I became popular inside of my church and I realized I can do this this is me I don't have to stand by friends who talk badly about me to my face when I just made my personal bully apologize and hug me so I went in deep I started getting into apologetics because Again, I'm a fucking nerd. And I started learning as much as I could about God. I wanted to make my belief system iron. I started dating a dude that was also in the inner circle. He was being taken care of by our youth pastor. Ironically, he had the same name as the stalker from like 10th grade. But, you know, it was fine. He was different, I told myself. And... Then I went back to school for 11th grade and I did the worst thing I ever could. I started breaking off from my old friend group 
I'd already started sort of distancing myself from the one guy from my art class because, God, it hurt. I had really liked him. Not crush, no. But I had trusted him. And it felt like I was drifting away from them already, which was fine. That happens in school. You don't expect to always make keep friends that you've made forever. It's, it's fine. A lot of them still live around that area. And I'm in Philadelphia. So what do you expect? But the worst was, the worst was Tara. Because she'd been my friend since fifth grade. She'd always stood by me. She wasn't a Christian, but she was my best friend. And I wrote her a letter saying that we couldn't be friends anymore. It was long. It was like two pages. But, and I thought I was doing the right thing because I had this new group. I wouldn't be let down by God. There's no way. I was doing the right thing, I thought. Breaking my ties off from the world to de and get deeper into Christ so that I could become an... <sighs> So that I could tell the word of Christ to all these people that I felt needed to hear it. And besides, she was still friends with the people that made fun of me in front of my face. When I'd made a bully hug me. But I still remember the look on her face. I know in that moment... I absolutely betrayed her. I hurt her. And at the time, I didn't really care. I was high on everything that made me feel good about myself. And I sort of forgot Tara. Then things happened. My boyfriend proved himself to be absolutely useless and not motivated to do anything at all. I went to college, my parents divorced, and my mom kind of used me as an excuse pre-divorce to meet with this dude that she was emotionally cheating on my dad with. Um, my youth pastor had a mental break and threatened his family with a gun I couldn't find a church down in Auburn where I was attending college. And I got in a relationship with a dude in California who said he was a Christian, but he pressured me to be sexual with him and low-key traumatized me. And I fell out of Christianity, but I couldn't stop thinking about Tara because I missed her. She was my best friend for years. And recently, most recently, I've been trying to reach out on Facebook. Facebook periodically pops her face up in front of me and is like, hey, you got some mutual friends because I refriended some of the people, including the guy who talked shit about me in uh, art class because fuck it he was just trying to impress a girl I'm sure and I'm beyond all that now I've gone through so much shit I don't care maybe that's just the depression talking but you know um so I'll hit friend request send this to Tara and a week or so later when I'm on Facebook again scrolling through uh, fish videos and five minute crafts because for some reason when my brain is stupid it just like hyper focuses on five minute crafts um her name will pop up again it's like hey you may want to be friends with her you want to send a request and I know she denied it and I'll click it again she doesn't want to talk to me it's understandable because I remember her face and 
this is something I can't forgive myself for. This is one of the reasons why I will not look kindly upon any facet of Christianity. Why I don't believe there can be good Christians because I was a good Christian and I broke this girl's heart. And I just want to tell her that I'm sorry. That I was an idiot. That I shouldn't have done that. That she was my best friend. And I know she always stood by me. And I'm sure people talk shit about me to her. For years. Because I was an idiot kid. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And I made a lot of mistakes. And I really think... My biggest mistake was turning my back on, to, on her. I hope if she ever hears this, she knows that I am sorry. And I hope if there's anybody listening to this now, if you're in school or if you're out of school, treasure your friends. It's, it's hard out there. And humans are social creatures. There's no need to bully each other. There's no need to cut friends off because of your faith. That's bullshit. If your faith is telling you to cut out your friends, cut out these people that have been with you for years, stop listening to them. Go get help. Go talk to a counselor. Someone who's not a theist. That's all I wanted to say, really. I'm fortunate now. I have a very good partner and I have a friend who is sticking with me, has stuck with me through several years, but it doesn't change the fact that I want to, I, I still miss Tara and I really hope she's doing okay. So everyone, y'all stay hydrated. I'm going to go get a drink now talk to the office about the broken toilet and start working on a new lino cut because I've got to completely recarve one and hopefully I have some time to start on my big video this week but I'll talk to y'all tomorrow bye